guys for free for free and no the examiner doesn't care about you the examiner doesn't know you the examiner has no loyalties to you so they'll just mark it wrong people would say revise revise see i know you have to revise but they didn't tell me how like how did you exactly do it in this video i'm going to be telling you exactly step by step how i would revise Welcome back to my channel, it's me Sadell and today I'm back with another video and as you've probably read the title I'm going to be doing a video on how I got all nines in GCSE triple science so I got nine in biology, chemistry and physics. I did post a video where I showed my live reactions opening my GCSE results and I also pranked my mum so make sure to watch that video after this one and thank you so much guys. The video now has 9.9k views which is like unimaginable so thank you so much for all the love on that video and i did get questions asking me oh how did you revise or how did you revise for science how did you revise for other subjects as well so i thought i'd start off with science and i could do more videos after this one make sure to subscribe to my channel and like this video if you found it helpful i found out sadly the other day well i actually found out a few seconds ago i don't know why i said the other day that 98.7 percent of you are not subscribed <laughs> So it does really mean a lot if you subscribe. This is how much it costs to subscribe. Oh wait, it's free! So yeah. I haven't even subscribed yet. Anyway, enough of the dilly-dallying, let's get on to this video. The first thing that I bought that was actually useful was the CGP GCSE books, the practice, revision and practice books. This is this book my school gave me. This book was, it was just not it. Like, it was very waffly. This is a whole chapter. This is what was actually on the specification and this is what they've made it to be like. So I did not use this book. I mentioned the specification like a thousand times in this video. So I thought I'd actually explain what it was just in case anyone didn't know. So the specification is a document that you can find by just searching up your exam board, for example, Edexcel, AQA or OCR, plus a subject. And in this case, I did AQA GCSC physics specification. And you can download it and save it to your bookmarks in your browser. And it's a very large document that tells you everything that you need to know for your exams. And it is a really, really large document. So if you want to find a particular topic, you can just press Control F and you can find the topic you're looking for. I'd rather be doing something else than revising. So I'm not going to spend a long time learning something that is not on the specification or I don't need to know. Obviously, I'd read over it, but I wouldn't make notes on it. I wouldn't spend time learning it. But what did focus on the specification was these CGB books and I absolutely love, 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 love these. It would just get straight to the point. I'm not gonna waste time learning things that I don't need to know. So that is why the CGP book, I feel like this is sponsored by CGP. I'd only recommend the CGP revision and practice textbooks. So the first thing I did was start off with topics that I did not understand. When there was an exam or a test, I would always go from A to Z even though the start of the topic was like something I understood but the end of the topic was something I did not really understand or didn't really get in class but that was my first thing that I stopped doing when I got into year 11 I started revising the things I found hardest first if you leave the hardest things till last to learn you have less time to go over it because it's closer to your exam therefore start with the hardest topics first so half of my screen would have a free science lesson video playing based on the topic I was learning. I use free science lessons, which is a YouTube channel. He was so, 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 so helpful. Everyone's cats, dogs, mothers, uncles, brothers, sisters, friends, son-in-law, everyone I knew used free science lessons, basically. He breaks it down, he summarizes it, and he's really concise, and it's really, really, really helpful. I recommend it. He'd have playlists based on the paper, so physics paper one, biology paper one and i'd watch every single video half of my screen would have free science lessons playing and half of it would have the specification open never revise without the specification open i had the specification for all of my subjects saved if i see something that's not on the specification close my eyes look <laughs> i'm joking i wouldn't close my eyes i'd read over it but i wouldn't make notes on it then made flashcards with a question on one side that i made up and then the answer on the other side which was directly from the specification word for word 
test myself, have my flashcards that I've tested myself in two piles, one pile for things that I knew, one pile for things I didn't know, and the ones in the pile that I didn't know, I kept on going over until I knew, and there were no flashcards left in the pile that I didn't know. See, on this one flashcard, I have seven questions, so that saves space. You can cover it as you're looking at your answer, so you don't peek at the other ones. I would hole punch them and put my flashcards in the section of the topic that I was learning. So I wouldn't have my flashcards separately. 12.30 a.m. right now, and this is what I'm doing. These were very cheap. I remember I walked into WH Smith once. Tell me why I saw 50 flashcards for £3.79. Well, let me check the price because I don't want to get sued. <laughs> One day I walked into WH Smith and I saw they were selling 50 flashcards for £4. Thank God I didn't buy them because I went on Amazon the next day or something. 100 cards on Amazon for £1.79. And these are the cards that I bought. They're really nice and colourful. They're a very good size as well. Like this is the size of my head. This is. <laughs> Everything I mentioned in this video, there will be a link in the description for it. So with the science required practicals, how I would remember them is sometimes I use flashcards for the required practicals, but most of the times I made posters because they're quite long and I wanted to memorize them in detail. Uh, posters and on the specification, unfortunately, it doesn't give you a breakdown of how to go about doing the experiment. I'd use physics and math tutor.com. Guys, for free, physics and math tutor would give us a whole breakdown of the required practical for free and i'd make notes and i do step one step two step three step four and then color code it as you can see some are green some are pink also really good resource for required practicals again free science lessons this is my physics and chemistry folder i would always use color piece of paper um which i just got from my school how i would remember the equations is i would stick my flashcards on a wall i daydream all the time if i'm daydreaming and looking at the wall guess what's on the wall equations even if you're not a daydreamer it's still really important because if you put them in places that you see often and then sometimes when i just glance over to the side i see oh q equals it exam i'll have a photographic image of it on my wall okay q equals it done i made up a song i don't know whether i want to sing the song or not because people would laugh at me at school but then when it came up in the exam guess who knew it was me i remember they remembered too but maybe in a less embarrassing way one of my songs i had on my playlist was i gotta protect my heart i gotta protect my heart so i changed the song to i gotta protect my starch i gotta protect my starch quick iodine test from orange to blue or black that's how we test for starch and you know i might cut me singing out i don't know whether i'm gonna keep that there because that was a bit embarrassing not gonna lie so then for chemistry how i'd also remember important things was obviously i'd use flashcards to help me but i would also make posters this was something to stick on my wall to help me remember things i will insert a clip of what my desk looked like it might look chaotic but i really 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 helps what i can't as finished revising the topic is i made my flashcards i've tested myself eventually after testing myself my pile of flashcards of things i don't know is completely gone i now know everything in my flashcards it's photographed in my brain to make sure i really really know it this is when i do the blurting technique so what I do is close all my books, close your CGP book. So basically have no notes open. Then what I do is I get a plain piece of paper and I write everything I remember of that topic without using my notes. So I'm gonna show you an example here. So this is everything I remember of respiration. Everything in black is what I remembered from respiration and on this side as well. Then using the specification and my CGP book, will I then go and fill in in a different color pen the things I forgot. So as you can see in pink is the things I forgot. So here I forgot happens in the mitochondria. I know that respiration happens in the mitochondria, but I just didn't write it down. However, in the exam, you can't tell the examiner, oh, I knew that I just didn't write it down. And now you know the gaps in your knowledge. I stuck it on my wall as well. Here I have another memory map I made. So, so far I've talked about how I'd make my flashcards and then I'd do the blurting revision technique. Now it is time to practice your exam technique. You can know the content, but it's how you word it. And if you write it in the way the examiner wanted you to write. So I'm gonna show you all the exam practice I did. This is the folder that I use to keep all of my test papers for science. I go into a website called examqa.com and physicsandmathstutor.com. Examqa.com and physics and math tutor would have exam questions based on each topic for free. For free! They have pages and pages and pages and pages and pages 
worth of exam practice questions for free. The reason why I use exam QA more was because physicsandmathstutor.com had a lot of repeats of one mark questions, multiple choice questions. So I used examqa.com, which had longer mark questions like four mark or six mark questions. So on examqa.com and physicsandmathstutor.com, you can cater it towards your exam board, the topic. So these are the test papers. And I mark it strictly. If you think, oh, I basically said that, no. The examiner doesn't care about you. The examiner doesn't know you, the examiner has no loyalties to you, so they'll just mark it wrong. I'd say if you don't know whether it's right or wrong, mark it wrong. But at the end of the day, these papers are for you, no one else is going to see it. A really good thing that I did was I would write the topics I got wrong, I'd date them as well. This one, when did I do this? 21st of December. Oh, wait, 21st of December? That was four days before Christmas. That's kind of sad. Well, not sad, but like... It was right before Christmas, I was doing that. Let me see if I, imagine if I see one that says 25th of December, I'll actually throw this whole thing into a fire. <gasps> oh, phew. I thought it said 25th of December, it was 25th of October. I was about to say, I did a, I did an exam paper on Christmas day. I was like, I would never do that. I didn't print out the past papers every time. For example, in this physics paper, I didn't print it out. I just, if you don't have a printer or you don't use a lot of paper, sometimes I would write down the answer and then write my corrections in and then closer to my exams i would do the actual exam papers on my exam board website and i did the exam papers closer to my exams because i didn't want to waste them i wanted to make sure i knew every topic before i did the exam papers because they didn't have a lot of past papers for aqa so just to summarize this video and everything i've said in it i revised the hardest topics first and worked my way back to the easiest topics so i have the most time to learn the hardest topics in time for my exam and then made flashcards with a question on one side that I made up and then the answer on the other side which was directly from the specification word for word. Next thing I did was the blurting revision method. Next thing I did was exam question practice from examqa.com and sometimes physicsandmathstutor.com. Then lastly I would do exam questions from my exam board website. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really 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 hope that you find this useful. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and like this video and comment down below the next subject you want me to do don't forget to watch my opening my GCSE results video see you next week bye